Hey there, it's Chris Kerr, and this is my next episode in a strange new journey. Um, again, we're <laughs> open to other names for it. If, if you got something better you'd, you'd rather it be called, just you know, make your suggestions out of DM or put them in the comments. We'll we'll see what we can do. But it seems to be sticking, and people seem to be liking it. So we'll we'll take it from there. Today, um, in this particular episode, I want to talk about um, personal brand assets again. And I'm, I'm, I know I'm harping on this a little bit, but uh, there, it's such a deep area, it's such a deep topic, um, and it, it ranges from your physical perception of yourself and how you get to translate that into um, assets that, that produce revenue, right, to your voice, to your, uh, your, your words, to your experience, to your music, your art, or, or whatever your talents may be. Um, this is an area where it is so deep and so rich. And so what I want to talk about today actually is a little interesting. Um, I happen to be doing a little reading on the, so on the topic. And I came across an article from last year actually talking about what's coming for this year in terms of personal branding trends. And there are 14 things in this particular article uh, on Forbes.com. And it talks about, uh, it got quotes from various people who, who kind of track these trends, like Jay Friedman of the Good Way Group. And he said for the number one leading trend in terms of personal brands in 2022, and I think we've seen this happen a, a fair bit, it's leading with compassion. And leading with compassion means your content starts with showing compassion to your employees, to your team, to people on the street, to um, different views at different um, parts of your content, right? So there's a wide variety of places where your compassion can go get some exercise. And I think we've seen a lot of compassion and empathy in content that we've seen so far. And, and some of my favorite stuff is um, the stuff of, of generosity and giving to people who are so clearly and so desperately in need of it. Um, students who, you know, their computers are clearly on the fritz. Somebody walks up and just hands them a brand new computer. Um, somebody else, you know, they're, they're, they, they don't even have a car. They've never had a car. Well, all of a sudden they've got everything it takes to have a car. Poof, done. And here's the car. Um, lots of that stuff is really exciting, but it's not something that everybody can do. You can't be that generous all the time with products and cash and other stuff. Um, the other side to it is that sometimes that compassion goes, I'm not going to say the wrong way, but it clearly defines who, your, who you think your audience is, which may not actually be your audience. And so you can lose a lot trying to attract uh, an audience that you feel you'd like to work with, but that are not your ideal buyers. And so if you're showing compassion to a group that is, um, let's just say particularly privileged, they may be particularly um, harshly treated in certain contexts, but let's say they're, they're particularly privileged in others, and it's a controversial situation, you may in fact be talking yourself out of some fantastic relationships with people you would genuinely like who just happen to disagree with you on certain topics. That, that, that's not a, usually a situation where on the business side of things, that makes any damn sense at all, right? That, that's, that's just biting your nose to spite your face. But if that's who you identify with and that's who you particularly um, want to try to work with, you've got to understand that can dramatically increase the volume of your business, but also increase the complexity and the, the heavy lifting that goes with that business, right? Because oftentimes the customers that we like best as people are not necessarily the customers that like us best as experts in terms of paying us to do the work that we need to do, right? And that's something that you really need to consider. Are you shopping with your own wallet or are you shopping with theirs? And if you're shopping with their wallet, you don't know them. You honestly don't know who they are. You don't know who they are in the dark of night. You don't know who they are with their own flaws and, and faults. You don't know who they are in any way, shape, or form. You don't know whether they're rich or poor. And that's where... In sales, sales trainers for 
decades and decades and decades have been trying their best to convince sales reps to stop shopping with the customer's wallet and to stop shopping with your wallet, either you as the salesperson or you as the company. Neither of them are the people who are making the buying decisions. It's only the customer who's making the buying decision, and they're the only ones who know whether this is something they want, whether this is something they can use, whether this is something they can benefit from, and what the ROI expectations for their investment should be. They're the only ones who can make that choice. And so if you're going to run a business based on your personal brand, you've got to think about that real hard. Are you shopping with your wallet? Are you shopping with their wallet? Or are you letting them shop and buy from you? And my rule of thumb has always been and will always remain that of the Woolworths founder's philosophy. Now, at one point, a journalist caught him and said, you're, you're 32 years old. You now have 40 retail malls all to yourself, all to your Woolworth stores and brands all over the world. You didn't start with a silver spoon in your mouth. How did you get to be so good at selling stuff? And he replied very easily, I really am not very good at selling anything. What I realized is that I wanted to make it as easy as possible for my customers to buy from me. And that set off a century worth of business growth that is relatively rare in the history of business. Woolworths dominated for the best part of a century in everything they did. And it still leaves big chunks of um, social content, the blue light special, that kind of thing. Um, th these are things that are going to stick in our, our social construct for a very long time. So I really want to leave that as your, your thinking um, model. Compassion is fantastic. As, as a, a, both a, a generous feature and a, a way to help people up. And it's also something you really want to consider carefully if this is an area you want to go through and go to. Because how you do it, who you do it with, and who you do it for, and in some respects, who you do it to, all count in terms of the value of your personal brand. And this is something you're going to have to monitor very carefully if you enter the compassion brand as yours. That's my take on it for the moment. I will obviously keep coming back to this because it's such a, such a deep well. But I hope that helps you think through your personal brand just a little bit more. Have a great day. Cheers.